Hello, this is Max Drake. I want to talk, it's really a, a progression on from what I've been doing before. This is a Python where I wanted to remote trigger a script at, a, at whatever time I wanted to. So the idea was that I had a button on a web page, I hit that button and I would get the updated information on a particular app that I had. So I thought, that's really cool. And then the next one is I wanted to deploy it so that um, I actually had a subdomain on a website. So I've got existing websites, so I actually just created a subdomain on that. And so that subdomain, I can actually just give that URL to anybody and say, go and press that button. Unfortunately, it sends the email to me. It does send it to them. But I say that, well, extending that further, let's actually get um, an app that can actually display something on the web page itself. So why bother going through this process of going and making an API call, bringing it back in, doing some processing inside of uh, Pandas, and then writing it out to a matplotlib, and then writing that to a PDF file, and then having another script that then attaches that PDF file and then email it to me. Why not just display the information straight on the um, screen, uh, on the web page? So I suddenly thought, well, okay, then that's a, 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 tr a, a, a progression on from what I've done before. So the idea was, I wanted to think, well, what can the project be about? So um, I was looking, and one of the things that I was looking at is maybe there's a job downtown. And I suddenly thought, well, actually, if I'm going downtown, I'll take the bus. So I'm in an outer zone uh, in the city of Wellington. So inside the city, uh, I could take a bus into the city, and then there's a whole load of buses that happen uh, inside the city. So at this point in time, I suddenly thought, well, when is the bus coming at a specific point in time? So uh, this is Metlink inside Wellington, and uh, it, it has an API. So you can actually just go and say, can I have an API? You just log in, give your, password, your, your, your email details and stuff, and, and you, they, they give you an API. Thank you very much, all for free. When I started to look at the information on this API, it suddenly came through on this thing here called General Transit Feed Specification. Now, apparently, this is a, an international specification for how the API data should be fed through about uh, vehicles and transit and journeys and stuff like that. So coming back and looking at uh, Wellington, we've got some ferries going across, we've got um, trains going up and down to certain places, we've got private enterprises that have express bus that go to certain specific areas, um, and then we actually have the municipal bus service that they've um, uh, it, 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 priced out to somebody else that, that, that actually does this service for them. So there's a whole lot of players in there. So when we actually look at the API, in here I've actually gone on, I've got my dashboard, I've got my API key and it's authorized me through here. So this is the fast API um, interface through here. And so if you just go on this first one here, we can say try it out and uh, it's got no parameters and it says, okay then, who are the people who are there? So we've got a whole load of um, Match Coach Lines Limited, UZM, there's this WC, Wellington Cable Car, um, uh, NZ Bus, all of these things. So if we look on the map, we can see there's buses, there's trains, there's schools, there's ferry and cable cars, and there's um, oh, there ferries and the cable cars and all of that. So there's a whole lot of different transit um, methods that, that are getting across the city and, and stuff. And we've got these tools to actually make these APR calls. So if we just look at some of the ones through here, I'm going to jump through. One that we've got is one called Roots, and another one is that we've got one called Shapes. So let's just have a look at those. So for the Roots ones, we actually just typed out that, and it says, where's the stop? So I know what my bus stop is. It's 7575. So if I execute that, it gives me a bit of information about that. It says it's on Route 20. Oh, sorry, 200. The agency that does that is NBM. I think that's the company that done it. And this is where the route is. It goes from Kilburnie, Mount Victoria to Courtney Place. And so that's quite good. <clears throat> then if we go and try shapes and try this out, it actually says, give us shape ID. So you kind of say, well, where do I get the shape ID? So I don't know. And so if we come in here and we look at stops, so where the bus stops are, and we try that one there out, this one says, what's the route? Well, we know the route is 200, but then it says the trip ID. So anyway, after a little bit of scratching of my little noggins, I came across this one called trip. So if we try this one here out, what it says is it wants a start date. So we'll actually just take this start date through here and we'll put today's date in there. So it's three and it's five and it's the 21st. And we're gonna make it from midnight 
um, through to um, say uh, 20 so 8 o'clock at night it's then going to say uh, what are the bus stops you want to go to so from where so 7575 comma and 5000 is the one that I actually want to go to it's the end one and then uh, what route so we want the route which is 200 so if we execute that we're given a whole load of trips now if we look at one of these trips you can see it's, it's the ID is 200 and it's got a service ID which you can see is tagged onto the end of that we've then got the route 20 and then there's some other bits of here but there seems to be a whole lot of concatenations to make up this trip ID to give these secret information through there as well as that we can actually see the shape ID through here so we can take that shape ID and we can say thank you very much and we can go back up into our shapes we can bang that shape ID into there and say what happens mush and when we come into here we get a JSON response and if we look down there whoops, that starts off with uh, shape point sequence zero and if we go to the very bottom we have 681 so there's 681 points along the route and the reason for that is we're just going to pop over to here the reason is is because it's a very wiggly route so therefore we've got to have lots of points along that route to be able to describe a polyline that roughly follows the road so that's quite cool so we've got the route through there so we can take that and we can save that as a JSON file and then be able to overlay that on the map the next one that we've got is that we've got the stops now we've got the stops and then we've got a trip ID filter so if we go down and just grab any trip doesn't really matter because the trip because it's the same route all the time we should be able to um, get all the same bus stops so if we look at the bus stops that each bus stop has an ID so somewhere on there there'll be an ID 5000 it should be the last one possibly no and there should be one which is 7575 which is the one that I want so we can save those ones there and then we can plot them on the map too so each of the ones here we can actually see the bus stops and we can put a pin in there and say that's where they are cool so that's quite nice all right up to a point pretty much we've done what they've got through here they've shown the wiggles and they've shown the lines and then we can actually put the bus stop through here so on the show map we can actually say stops we got the fear zone which is a bit confusing if I take off the stops it just shows the roots but if I put the stops you'll see the little circles on there so we've got that so far but we can do better so if we go into here whoops down the bottom we've got some real-time updates for public transport so if we look at this we've got one called vehicle positions and we've also got one called stop predictions so that is when is the next one going to come so there's an estimate there's a schedule time of when the next one's due but is it early or is it late can we see some time so let's look at vehicle positions now vehicle positions it says give us nothing so if we just execute this actually I wonder if I just put 200 into there and go execute see what happens there now you see whatever you do it just gives you every single vehicle that's active at this point in time so if there's a vehicle ID so if we go into here and look at the vehicles so each one of these coming through so it has an ID and then it says it's a vehicle so that could be a ship it could be a sorry it could be a ferry it could be a bus it could be a train it could be a cable car um, it's got a, a trip ID and it's got a time of when the start time is it's got its route ID but the other thing that it's got it's got a vehicle ID and the, what I draw so each of these will actually have so all of the trips that are currently active at this point in time what they've got in their transit network will have an ID on it and it will say there's your ID at this point so that's good but when we come down and do the stop prediction departure ones let's try this one here out and we actually put our code in for our bus stop 7575 and go execute 
if we look at the first ones that come through here, when we look at the first ones here, doo -doo 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 -doo, you'll see it's got a vehicle ID because that's the nearest one. So it's saying from this instant forward, what's that called? But as we go further along, you'll see that there's no vehicle ID. So it's got it. Um, somebody should actually say vehicle ID null because it hasn't been assigned one yet because it's going to be, um, it's a later scheduled one. So therefore this is at uh, 17. So that's at 5.40 and it's now at 4.35. So therefore that bus hasn't started on its route so it hasn't got an ID yet. So we can actually go and call all of the future ones and I think they actually just go all the future when does the last one go through here? So this one goes through until uh, 15. So that's three, so there's something wrong with that. Oh, sorry, departure. No, it's it's got um, early one. Seems a bit odd, really. Um, 14, uh, so it's got, ah, it's got some, not too sure what's, what's this doing. No, it's doing my, my bus stop. So it has anything to do with that bus stop. And uh, some of them seem to have gone past already. But the one that it's got at the very front has actually got a vehicle ID on there. So that's quite important. So I just wanted to highlight the stuff of the data we're getting in. Now, when I started doing this, I actually just broke down. Uh, I ended up with two. I ended up with the bus app, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I ended up with just uh, short little scripts that I ended up doing, which were basic API calls. Um, and I set them up and just did a quick test on each one. So I've got this one for predict now. Um, and I tested it out doing the API key and got back the information that I want. So if I just run this one through here, is that running? Run, run, you run. Uh, you should return a couple of dates, uh, sorry, a couple of times. So at this point in time, I'm just gonna drop that into here, V. It actually gives two times. It gives the departure aim time, so that's the scheduled time and it gives the expected time. So that's actually the, this is the arrival time at the bus stop, or that's when it's supposed to come at the bus stop, the next one here, which is at 17, so 5.15. And when's it going to arrive? Well, it's gonna come at 17.15 because I'm not too sure whether this one started or not. It might be slightly forward. So this might end up being 17.14 because it, it might be a bit earlier. So we've got an extra bit of stuff. Well, like we've got today's date. We don't really need that. And we've got this plus 1200. So we end up stripping this out later. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's just go into the Flask app. So basically for the app itself, where's my app? Here's the app itself. Uh, for the app itself, uh, we're calling Flask. And inside the first route here, it just goes and says, render this template. So the template that it's rendering is just an HTML file. So it's just a web page that we get to render and it's got this title, bus route map or whatever. The first thing that we have in here is a Google's API key. Now this isn't, this is a dummy key that I put in there just to show you how it's actually structured. You can get a free one of these. Now I just want to highlight that through here. If you just look on Mr. Uichubi, you'll see a whole lot of Google, if you just type Google Map API, uh, Google Map API key for free. So, you know, you just got to set it up and go into the console, get your own API key. You can then go and put it onto a web page. Now, again, with that, I just want to come back into um, VS Code. Now, inside VS Code, there's an extension called Live Server. So if you bring in live server, if you're trying to test out an HTML file, you can actually go live with your live server and it will open up that web page for you in the browser. Now, because it's got the wrong API key, it's going to, um, it's not going to show the map. So just be aware of that. But what this does is, 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 is once you've got it, you can actually see all of those things to, to actually test them out. Um, so, um, uh, but I'm not going there. That's not a point of interest that I'm going through. I'm doing through the rest of the API, which is basically calling that data and displaying it. So um, at the end, we, we, we've got that shown on the map. So coming back to our code, 
we've got this display going through there it's getting the API key and it's going it's creating a function called initialize the map so it's going through and creating a Google map and it's giving the center latitude and longitude so that's for Wellington and it's got a zoom level of 15 so just how much you zoom in and where you zoom in and and it does and I've got to reset that up so that it works on a mobile phone a bit better um, there's a couple of other things to do with the map right at the very bottom in the body you'll notice that nearly all of this is all happening in the head not in the body so because it's a whole load of scripts in the body you've given it's given a div for the map and I've got the width at a hundred percent and I've got it I'm just playing with the height at eighty percent and then I've got a button and and I've got a button call when my button is used so that's all that's actually in the body all the rest of it is actually script so that's just JavaScript coming through so coming back to the flask app we've got the flask app we import JSONs we import uh, requests the config is actually just hiding my API key for the um, uh, uh, met link whatever uh, it's the API key that I've got for the API no, no, no. yes exactly API for API if we come into here we then have this bus route now all this bus route is doing is uh, it's opening up I've just saved the bus route JSON all those uh, 681 locations or whatever 681 they all have a latitude and longitude point in them so I've just kept the file as it is and then inside of here I just end up with a, a, an empty array I call in the JSON I upload the JSON into a variable called bus route data and then I go and loop through the bus route data and get the latitude and longitude and put it into an array called bus route and then it's appended each time I go through and loop I add another latitude and another longitude all the way through and then I've got this thing called return JSONify bus routes now JSONify is a, uh, a method inside of the flask uh, so we do that now we do the same for the stops we've got the stops which is uh, another JSON file that just has all the stops now from that we get the stop ID we get the stop name which we don't really need and we get the latitude and longitude of each particular stop now so that's what we're doing with that so we're just sucking in the JSON file looping through it and putting everything into an array and then we've got this return so it's returning once we've gone through this process we're returning this JSON um, JSONify called stops so let's just hop back into here now that creates it and it's got it there waiting and it says what do you want to do this and inside of the HTML file it says go and fetch bus routes so it goes and grabs the JSON file which is the bus route one or the stops it then for the bus route it then creates a polyline with all of the um, array points and it puts them in there and it says it's going to the stroke width is going to be three uh, the opacity is one and the color is blue and uh, it, it puts them through there so it, 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 it's doing those in that coordinates and with the stops instead of actually doing a polyline which is the line all the way through for the actual route it's actually doing markers so plonk 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 and he's putting a marker and he's putting a label called stop ID it's got one called title but in fact the title doesn't show through on the pin that we've got through there so that's that part of it so that part's quite easy we actually just um, get the information in from uh, the flask app and then we apply it into uh, on, and, and apply it onto the map so that's quite good now the next point that we actually do through there is that we go and get the bus location so for that because that's changing all the time we actually do a vehicle position API and we make an API call to go and get that information now we need the API key so here's the API key which is hidden in the config file config.py um, and uh, when we get the response we then and remember when we actually go and ask for the vehicle position we get every vehicle that's out there at the moment so what we've got to do is we've got to filter it down 
to only the trips that start with 20. So they're all the ones that just relate to my one. So we don't care about the ferries, we don't care about the cave cars, don't care about the trains, we just care about them on that. So once we've got them, we can actually just get the vehicle position latitude and the vehicle position longitude. We only want one of them and we want the latest one. So what's the current one at the moment? What's the bus that's driving? So we want zero. So in an array, we may have two or three vehicles running, but we want the one which is the first one in the array. So that's the nearest, so that's the current one that's actually going. And when we, we do the same thing for the when routes. So when we've got that bus location, which is the latitude and the longitude, we actually put it into an array, uh, a, j a return, a j j JSONify um, this uh, variable, which has these in there. Now I just asked Mr. Bing to do a lot of this for me. It's not as if I'm particularly smart myself. Now the second one, with the when, we actually give a stop ID. At this point in time, I've hard coded it, but I could have a little window so that I could actually either have a pull down list of the, the bus stops that I use frequently, like if I'm coming from one direction or the other, um, or I can hard code it. So at this point in time, I've hard coded it, but I've allowed it to be, uh, you can change that variable for whatever you want. And this one then gets the key, that makes an API call, and then it says, go through, and it says, okay then, um, I'm only going in one direction. So if we just go back to the map, I'm only interested in buses that are going from here, from my lookout point, to Courtney Place. Any ones that are going from Courtney Place down to um, uh, Kilburnie, I'm not interested in any of that. So the first thing we do with that is we filter them out by one direction. We're only interested in the ones going to Courtney Place. So that's the one. So we're always saying is the destination as well as that. So what I actually did with this, I just bunged the JSON file inside there. And I said, that's the JSON data. I want to, how do I filter out so that I only get the ones going to Courtney Place? And it said, that's fine. Then the second one that I did is that I only want the ones which actually have a vehicle ID. So that means it's a bus that's active at this point in time or scheduled to be active in the next um, 10 or 15 minutes. So it's the, the, the trip has been given a vehicle ID to go with it. So there's not many of them. They're only really the active ones. So we can go through and filter out from half of them. So instead of all the ones that we've got going to Courtney and all the ones going to Kilburnie, we've now only got half of them going to Courtney Place. And then we've now said, where's the latest one? Which one has an ID in there? And then we filter that one out and remember our date. I wonder if we got that date. We've got the date thing in there and our date is in this format. This is what we get returned. The aimed or the expected is coming back like that. So what we do is we strip it out. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's where we start. And then we say, OK, then we go up to 19. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So that's all it's going to bring me back. So it's cleaned all that other muck away. So it's only pulling that back and it's going to give me that. Now, if the bus is not running, as in we haven't got an ID, so the driver's decided he doesn't want to go on the trip because it's cold out there, we give an empty. We don't give them anything. We just give an empty one through there. So if we now go back and look in the route through here, um, we get with this one here, with the uh, bus location, we get the response from the JSON, which is the coordinates, and we've got a lat long through that, and we put a marker on there, and the marker is blue. So that's what it does, and it shows that one through there. For the one where we're getting um, uh, the other one getting through here, uh, which is the button, so this one here is our button, my button, when is the, the bus due? So document, uh, the document get element by ID. So this is just your JavaScript, my button, and then add the event click on click. We're going to run this function here, which is fetch. We're going to return the when and the when um, uh, app uh, root is we get the response of the JSON and then it gives us our expected time, scheduled time and our scheduled date. So item zero data of that data return is the first element is the scheduled time and the second one is the, is the expected time. So that's what it puts through there. And I think uh, on, on the current one that I've got, 
if that is empty it says if empty then just say no bus running at this point in time so we're not going to get something so that's how that works through there so if we now go back and just do the script itself and we say um, as I said I haven't got it quite located through there um, it's given the blue icons down here at the bottom so if we just go control shift C onto that through there um, and I like it into the network so we just do a refresh and we don't need all of that so we can come across um, so I'm just going to zoom out because I think my button uh, I can actually say when is the bus due and it's going to say 17.15 so it's 4.50 so it's going to be in about 25 minutes that it's coming through and where is my bus at the moment if we zoom in somewhere here we can see the bus is actually just coming up to the terminus where it'll wait and have uh, a Siggy or 15 and then it'll start tracking out again so that'll start in a little while and then it'll come through so the anticipated time of, of, of uh, scheduled time is 17 but since the route I think this is still going let's just wait 15 seconds and see which way that icon's moving da 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 it's not have I done a pause on it no it's getting it should be jumping along that's location no it's paused there so obviously it's got to stop and he's, he's, he's just stopped um, or maybe ah it could be traffic lights no wrong place for traffic lights traffic lights are here um, anyway he's not where he, he's not in a position where uh, he's doing anything we'll, we'll pause that at this point in time so this is the other thing I put this pause button onto here because this is making a call every five seconds and so that's a lot of API calls so I'm just pausing, pausing it through there so that's the app itself and I've got a visual on the app I can bring it through so what I've actually had to do is I've had to bang that onto a subdomain so um, I want to talk about the subdomain through here and I think I've got it all set up wrong so let's just go and completely naff this up so um, I, I did a couple of things wrong with this one uh, I had this based on uh, the DNS um, in like Cloudflare so what that means is this is concept content delivery system so it goes and stores a lot of my web pages and stuff on other things through there so I've got this one called bus through there and it, it's that but if we keep the data what happens is it's holding the old data onto there so I've got to constantly come back in and purge that data so this was a bit stupid really but hey you know I don't uh, so I'm just going to purge whatever that's got in memory so that we can actually just generate that directly in the in a web page um, from the beginning now the other thing that I've got I'm going to stop all of these and uh, get them right so I'm going to go into there and I'm going to stop that one and I'm going to go into there whoops and start that one ah which one did I start no I'm going to go into there and start and I want to go into there and start this is a problem which I've actually had with um, uh, flask apps so if we come we've got we had the original web page which was our flask app uh, and I just want to pop that up in the background good and then I want to bring up my IIS uh, and I had this in the foreground so if I restart this one through here and then I say go and show me this so this is going to my original one called button now look what it's displaying it's not displaying the button if I actually go into history and I clear recent history and I just clear everything I just really clear in the cache that's what I want to do and then I refresh that instead of showing my button it's actually showing the um, my bus route now what's happening there is if we just go into the folders we've got our PIR website and their main PIR website is in root 
but we've actually created two other ones. One called Button, which is a Flask app that's running here, and we've created another one called Bus, which is another Flask app which is running in this folder. But if I just demonstrate um, outside of here, because it would be easier, and I run this app through here, let's just go through and check. Save, and we just run that through there. If I run this here, you'll see that this is running on HTTP 5000. So this is localhost 127.0001 5000. So that's where that is running. Now if I go and run the button app, that's another Flask app that's running on da 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 5000. So there's a conflict. The two Flasks are running on the same port. So whichever one gets started first, that's the one that's going to grab all of the attention. Now I can't run both of them inside of um, VS Code through here to do it. I can either run or the other ones. So one of the things which you can actually try and do, I'll just cancel out of there, is what you can do is that you can actually say for one of them, well, we're going to change the port is equal to 5001. So now if I run this Flask app here, um, it should be, I'm just going to, it should be, uh, if I go through and I try and run that now, it shouldn't run. But if I now go on to 5001, it's running on that port there. And that's good. So this is the conflict which I've got. If I'm doing them in the IIS, so on my server, both of them are running on, uh, well, they're both running on uh, 443. But whichever one gets called first, the other one ends up showing that web page. So it could be just buttons or it could be um, just uh, things. So even if I now stop one of them, so I'm now going to stop the bus one and I'm going to stop it and uh, I'm going to come through onto the page and I've still got B there and I'm going to refresh that, it's still giving me that because again, I've got a clear recent history. We're going to clear the cache and now hopefully, no, it's still going there. I don't know where it's getting this from, but if I actually go into another web browser and I'll try this, and we're just going to get out of there and we're going to go into my bing bong we're going to go into bing and go v no it's still doing it inside of that one and this is a problem is that although the other one we stopped that server it's still seeing it as that so i ended up with this problem of um running a couple of flask apps in the same domain name, but although they were subdomains and stuff like that. Now I did some research on it and there's a few different ways that you can do them, but I found all of them a little bit complicated and, and there's different methods. Now I tried running them from different ports and that didn't seem to work. And a lot of the times I'd end up with something like this and then I'd have to put 5,050 or something like that on and then it locked up and only half the information came through. So when I tried running that one, I think it just seizes up. And if I go Control Shift C on that, um, and it won't even let me stop. And, oh no, it's not going to. Oh no, it's it's come through on on the refresh through there. We've now got the button app through there. So something's happening somewhere that it, it's it's sort of working. But if I now start up the bus routes one it'll most probably then get only show the buttons through there. So this is this conflict through there. And there was a couple of things, reverse proxies. There was a thing where you ended up going into your CGI thing and trying to do something through there. And it, it, it you, you shared them around. Um, uh, it had a whole lot of solutions, but all of them I, I'd sort of had a little bit of a tinker with, um, but I didn't really get it right. And, and uh, but I suddenly thought, oh, that's really complicated. So my fine, my temp, solution of what I decided to do was to go in 
inside of my CDN, I ended up making uh, a new uh, subdomain called C. So there's one called bus, one called there's B. Oh, there's B. And then I made one called C. And then what I ended up doing was inside my um, PIR, I made it one called combined. And inside that combined one, I made a combined Flask app. So there's only one Flask app running, and it's running those two different sites. So if we come into here, I've got one now. I've actually stopped them all. So I'm just going to go back through and stop that one. And I'm going to start C and get that one running through there. And C is now running and the other two stopped. Now, I've got a feeling it's going to be temperamental on me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just cancel out into here. And I'll cancel through here. And I'm going to run this app from uh, inside. So I'm just going to run it locally um, because uh, it's going to be temperamental otherwise. So I'm running this C app through here. And this is running on HTTP uh, 127C. So it's running local. So we'll just fire this one up. And what's, uh, what's happening with that? A bit confused there. Oh, here we are. Um, so if we just go and open this up here, and I'll just go through and put this in the path. So what I've decided to do in here is that I can combine the two apps. So if we just look at the app at this point in time, uh, right at the very top, um, I just ended up using the bus app because that had more routes than the other one. So the 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 the, the root root of the, the the app it just goes and to the bus app straight away. So as soon as you just put in the basic one, it goes through there. Then there's the one called the bus route. Then there's the one called stops. Then there's the one called um, uh, bus location and uh, when. Then after that, I've got one called slash B. So that's the one for the button. And then underneath the button one, there's run script, run script one, run script two, as it was before. So if we just go back into the browser through here, we can come into here and if we just run that one there and if we just go forward and uh, uh, bus route route enter we get all of our stuff dust coming through there so that's great that works through there if we come back through and type b just b we should get the buttons so that's fine as well so this way um, we're just having one flask app so we don't have the conflict of having two flask apps both trying to demand the same ports of what they're trying to do so getting that conflict so as I said whichever one started first the other one would just grab onto that one as well so this is the method that I've done which is combined them into a separate one now I'm not happy with that as an overall solution um, uh, and I need to maybe review and explore the other solutions that I can do on this later on so if I just type, um, uh, let's just go, uh, let's just go back into that one. It may or may not do it. If I do C, I don't know where it is. It may or may not. No, it doesn't seem to be. It still seems to be. This is this thing of remembering what was happening before, so it can be a bit of a pain. And sometimes I've got to go um, onto my Cloudflare. Uh, and uh, sorry into the overview and go and purge everything out of the CDN uh, so we've got to purge the cache and if we just purge all of those items through there hopefully if I come into here and I type that there I will get the correct no it's, it's going through and remembering the other one so that's the problem with the cache that's now I think inside of uh, Firefox so I've now got to clean that one now I've cleared both of those hopefully no it's still not doing it so there's a bit of a challenge with that I think actually what happens if I copy that and I go into a totally new tab 
Um, no, it's not doing it there either. So it, it is a bit of a challenge with, with how it does, and it does flash itself out uh, eventually, and, you know, I could reboot something to actually make it work. So that was a little bit of a frustration. My solution at this point in time is to put everything into one Flask app and just give them different routes. The only problem is they all end up with in one folder and, and so you've got several um, different things going through there. So I may have to look at restructuring the Flask app to allow for a few other developmental ones that I may want to plan to try and do. Now, along with that, um, I appreciate that uh, a lot of people will not have a, um, uh, an IS, a, 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 a Windows uh, server. Most people... Um, will we'll have a, a, a Linux server um, because you can get a Linux server license for free whereas the, the, win, uh, the uh, Windows server is expensive uh, so you, well, you have to pay for it so um, uh, uh, from the point of view of setup I was a bit unhappy with this and so what I started to do was to actually go and explore Python anywhere because I thought you know, from the point of view of demonstrating an app and what we can do, and here's the app and this is what it does, or oops, not that one, but the the one that we, we want, um, it, it, you can just show it on local host, but people want to deploy it so that it's usable. You know, so the idea of creating the app, but then deploying it, and the deploying it is just part of the thing. You can see the complexities that I've got through there with the conflict of the two Flask apps coming in, and that's just with me with the IAS side of things through there. So what I ended up thought about doing, well, what other way can I actually demonstrate these things to do? So you can actually go through and use Python anywhere. Now, if you get a free account, um, you can... Uh, just have one web app running so that you can actually make one flask app and get that one to run or you can do a django app or you can do one called a um, web to pi app uh, which is a framework now i was a little bit interested in this because you can actually download this onto your own computer and this is like a server similar to flask but you can actually make flask apps inside that will run on that and then you can and then you can actually compile it and then upload it inside of Python anywhere and uh, it'll if you make a web to pi app inside there you just pull your flask app in and off it will run quite nicely there is a demo on that if you see the web to pi one so I was quite excited about being able to instead of going through the my deployment method which is I'm trying to do on my particular subdomains and things like that um, to do it on uh, something like that so um, to, to do one you can come into the web this is purely set up for mine here now and so it's actually set up it won't give me any other options so I've got this one set up boom full stop uh, and it, it's got some nice features about it and stuff but overall I've actually had problems with this and if I just run this one here this is the URL that you end up having to take it to so if I actually just go to that URL and I run this one. Oh, that's actually doing the bus routes and stuff. I don't that I want that. Um, uh, if I just go to the actual web app itself, you'll see it gives the routes and it gives the uh, uh, bus stops as well. But at this point in time, I have not been able to, um, uh, if I try running this button, sorry, let's get to network, refresh, and try running so that's all true that's okay when is the bus due suddenly i keep getting these 500s so it doesn't seem to be like letting me do the api calls so when it's trying to get the bus location all of that side of the thing is actually blocked when i actually went in and looked at my setup through here one of the things that it has is it has the configuration file through here that you give the name of your app now the name of my app was bus um, app v3 and inside of that um, so if we see good bus app v3 and inside it calls app is equal to flask name so uh, you, you've got to make sure that you've got your file name through there which is the bus um, app v3 it took me a little while to figure that one out um, through there the other thing which I found when it, it, it made this as a bit of a boilerplate when it set it all up it needs these ones here 
but what I was finding when it set this up, it did it. Uh, it makes your project home, so the home, and then it gives your name of whatever you set it up with on my side. But it wasn't finding any of my. Um, uh, if we just go through bus routes, no, that's the bash console. No, um, oh, we're coming to here, and we just go uh, back to dashboard. No, we don't want to go to dashboard. We want to go to web. When we come into the web, um, we look at one of the working directory. Working directory. If we go to the working directory, here's my site with my files through there, and there's a subdirectory called templates, which is where we're keeping our HTML file. It's not finding these other files, so that's where when it had that. Uh, my site it didn't have the forward slash so it wasn't finding any of these files to be able to do so my app just wasn't working at all so I was finding it really frustrating to, to actually run so as a demo strike for setting up it's reasonably good to a point the other thing is um, because it needed and so inside of this bus v3 app if we just look at that particular one through there oh sorry I've got to hide that um, and the bit that I need to show you is at the top, so I like to have to do it inside here. Because I've got this import config, uh, it couldn't find a path. You see, with the other ones, I could actually go through and put that um, uh, path location. Uh, we'll just get back out of that. So I could put this path location uh, to where everything was. Sorry, I'm going to go, which is this one here. Uh, so in five, my script. I could put that path through to there, just do it here, P, um, like that. But I needed to have the forward slash to make sure that it was actually working. Let's see, we're going into there. Let me just uh, cancel out of that particular script. Um, so that was one problem that I had. But you can't do that. I couldn't find a way of getting keeping my API key hidden in the config file. Because this one was just looking, I don't know where it would, but it just wasn't finding it. So I actually had to type in my key um, inside the app itself, which was a bit of a pain. So I found that the pathing inside of here is not as obvious as what it seems. It seemed to find the ones in the templates, it just didn't find these other ones. But if we just go back up one level, and if we just go back, You've also got to create a virtual environment for all of your things. So if we just go into the environment, which is where I'm keeping my virtual environment and going through, you have to install uh, whichever version of Python that you want to use. You then have to use uh, site packages and things like that. Now, I think there is a video uh, here, and I'll give a link to this one, deploy Python Flask app on uh, pythonanywhere.com. So this one's quite good. I followed along. And uh, I only got so far, but I still seem to have this um, uh, cross origin request error. So if we look at the um, app as I've got it, whoops, where's my one through there? Now I want my dashboard. Uh, let's just go to web. Don't think that. Oh, here's my Python one anyway. So this one. If I actually look at some of these errors, it seems to be a strict uh, origin cross origin one. So I ended up putting Flask uh, cause uh, dash cause in as an extra um, library into my environment to try and get that to work, but it still didn't. So I'm doing something wrong at this point in time. I'm not too sure what it is. I'm a bit frustrated by um, what it's trying to do, and. Um, so I haven't been able to get that to work. So I'm hoping to be able to get the Python anywhere, um, an instance of it uh, with some of these things, because I think that's an easier place for people to kind of go with the tutorial. So if I can get that working, I'll do a separate video on that and most probably use uh, this. <laughs> it really annoys me the fact that I haven't got that up and running anymore. Um, no, that's not it either. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that's, no, it's going to come through with the button, I suppose. No, it's not doing it. Oh, here we are. Uh, it, it seems to come after a while. I find that quite odd. So uh, we can get this to do. So this has been quite a long video because of the fact that there, there's a few things. There's the um, progressing on 
and instead of actually just doing things in the background and sending me stuff i actually now want to the, the, the app to be up front um, so therefore there's the whole thing of the the, the using the uh, general transit feed set specification and the api and the stuff that i've got on here i've got a little rant on this as well from the point of view of it it's giving you um over it's giving you me uh, a free api key to actually use and i think to a certain extent a lot of these transit ones will be encouraging that because from the point of view of transit if you've got public transport there's a high demand at rush hour say in the mornings and in the afternoons but if you only supply good transportation at those particular times then people will only use them at that time and then they'll be using their vehicles at all other times and possibly at those times as well now from the point of view of a city uh, or a, a metropolitan area having 50 people in the bus on on a road moving along is far less wear and tear on that road than actually having 50 cars all sitting there and, and causing all pollution and a whole lot of other things. One for road maintenance, just quality of air and all of the things that metropolitan people have to deal with. And the fact that you've got 50, 50 different vehicles coming through as well, you've got to do extra road works and things. Whereas if you can actually get people onto public transports, it ends up being a lot more cost effective. Now, a lot of public transport will be, um, uh, it would be subsidised because of the fact that there's a high demand during the rush hour periods but you've got to offer that service all the way through from maybe 6 o'clock in the morning through to 11 o'clock at night to encourage families to kind of say we'll send the kids to school on a bus or do this and that so the transport's got to even out and it's got to be used for a longer period of time um, and so uh, you know 11 o'clock at night there might only be three or four people crawling home from a pub crawl uh, in which case there's, that, that there's a kind of an under underutilization. So you've got a high utilization in rush hours, maybe a medium utilization during the day, but there's a big drop off at the end. So you've got a sort of a double bell curve in, 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 in the way that you've got things. So they would be trying to encourage people to make creative apps to actually encourage other people to suddenly say, well, look, I can actually see when the bus is coming. I can actually call my API through here, wherever it is now that I've got it. And I can say, oh, look, where's my bus location? When's it due? And I know all of that on a specific app just for me. Why isn't that coming through? Oh, um, what's that one? Oh, there we are. And there's that one coming through there so I don't know if it's oh there's a there it is it's hiding behind the bush um don't know if that's on or off at this point in time let's just go and see um uh so they want to encourage people to actually um, make tools that are more available like I suddenly think well okay and then this is for for this one I could actually put a, a, a thing up and say anybody who's in this particular region in the community uh, if you're using public transport here's how you can see uh, if you can see where the bus is actually coming and which route is actually saying you can suddenly saying well oh it's 1715 but in fact it's being scheduled and it's actually coming at 713 I better I'll give myself five minutes and I can do that so you can actually say what timer based on the time when that is what time would you want this to trigger you know maybe five minutes is going to take me to get out of the house to get there or i want to set it at 10 minutes then you can say when's the next bus due you can make an alarm to suddenly saying it's time i actually went so you can actually make improvements on what this one here is this one here is a general one for all of the different transit things in the area you can actually develop an app specific for maybe a bus route or maybe a few things in the bus route so that so this is why to a certain extent these sorts of things would be made available for developers to actually create extra things because it, you're suddenly thinking if it adds more convenience to other people it's a tool that people would actually consider using so um it, it's it, this is a, an interesting project but i only really want to do the, the the one thing on this i'd really like to be able to get the um uh the the python anywhere or a simple server where you can actually just upload because i think from the point of view of doing these things of using things like the flask apps or the django or the um, dash or you know there's a, a another one for shares and things like that streamlit um uh, those ones you do need to deploy them somewhere so that they're more than just running a simple script 
and uh, or a simple server on your on your PC for a while. It needs to be distributed. So, and this has always put me off with things like Flask and the other ones. Yeah, I can I can see it running in on my local host, but that's no good to me. So it, you you need the two parts of the equation at this point in time. And and so far of my research that I've done, uh, the web to pi. Um, might be a method of doing it but um, uh, uh, I, I didn't like it from the there's not a I think it's a little bit old this web to pi one and I think it's um, it doesn't I, the only ones where I've seen them using it on the IIS setup is that they blow all of these websites away and they've got one called um, web to pi and then everything else is set up based around that one and I didn't want, I've got a whole load of WordPress ones and other things happening through here. So I didn't want um, just a word to pie on, on, on my particular server. So from that point, this doesn't quite work for me, but they might work for you. Um, and I didn't find that many resources for it at this point out, but you can download it. And there are some, uh, there are some tutorials out there um, for things. So, um, I hope that's been of interest to you. It's sort of been dealing with a lot of things along the way, but there's a few ideas, and I'm very, very pleased to be able to have. Uh, so this is definitely a progression from this. So at this point in time, I don't clutter up my uh, inbox with uh, lots of emails. I can actually just um, see it um, straight away. Boom, there. And, and I can get information that I want. And maybe there's other things that I can do. I can actually change the bus stop IDs and all of that sort of stuff. And, uh, you, you, you know, look at which route directions and stuff. But from the point of view of proof of concept, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to, to have that much information to be able to overlay it. And, and, and all I've needed for that is just a Google API key, uh, which again, you'd need to go and do a bit of your own personal research on that particular thing. And then the other one is um, uh, an API key. For, I, I got it for my Metro link, but you'd need to get it for your own uh, area that you're doing. Now, this does extend to a certain extent from the point of view of traffic. Now, this one here that I've got has got a Maps API key. Now, there is one called a Roots um, API key as well. And I think you can use that for traffic so that if you're planning to go into a certain thing, Bob, that, that you'd actually build a bespoke app that you were driving um, to work or you've got the thing for walking and I did see there's one that I played with very briefly that it, it, it's not got a map but it just it calculates how long those distances take so when you're actually in Google Maps and you kind of say how long to walk or how long to do this uh, it'll do those sorts of things for you and I think some of them will actually calculate also if there's delays so it's almost like the transit thing in the, the, the other map now I did play with that I decided to play with the transit one at this point in time I may come back and revisit that as far as the vehicles go especially for sort of like um, if you've got a steady commute you want to know whether the traffic's going to be very heavy or very light but if you just got a little button um, on, on a web page on your phone that you can do it and it's going to tell you um, uh, you can sort of anticipate and plan around those sorts of things so although this is transit it can be re uh, adjusted to bike um, uh, bicycle um, uh, walking and, and driving as well so uh, it, it's, it's sort of similar principles and stuff. So thank you very much for watching. It's been a bit of a long one and I just did a bit of a download with the fact that, you know, the API thing, thing and getting the actual map working to a certain extent on the local host was not a problem. The bit you which I actually had was the deployment and the flask apps and the things. And so I actually had to look at different methods of those of being able to have both of them uh, running at the same time. I don't want to end up suddenly thinking, oh, I want to look at that app now, so therefore I need to stop that server, Flask server, and start this Flask server. Oh, I want to do that. It's, you, you really just want them all running in the background nice and smooth. I've got something working. It's, it's a little bit of a hack in its way, but it's a working app. It would have been nice to be able to have it up on the uh, uh, Python Anywhere, um, but maybe that's another challenge for another day. So thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Thank you.